programme one was really, really, really strong uh, and started on a really strong film as well. Uh, so the first one we had was Scalaman, which translates from Norwegian as bald guy. Um, I think I was quite pleased that I didn't know any Norwegian and hadn't looked at the programme before I saw it. I just, I kind of made a conscious decision not to look at the programme. So I didn't know what the film was going to be about. And it kind of starts like this glacial kind of Scandin Scandinavian Green, drama. sort of typically... Very grey, you know, very... Yeah. And you think, oh, here we go, it's going to be a coming out story yeah. or something like that. And then it suddenly turns into this Bob Fosse kind of... <laughs> Bob Fosse-esque musical number. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I loved it because apart from sort of the ball guy who said, oh, could it be something out of Benny Hill, but mm. uh, had some of that. But it was lovely. You, you thought you, you were in line for a sort of a, a, a sort of a rather sort of dark uh, mm. Scandinavian film, and then yeah. it burst into song. And it, there were sort of echoes of, of, of every sperm is sacred from the movie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all it was a bit that. like that. But it was just joyous, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. A really and, good film to open on. And the dance routines were very well done. It was, it was, it was a bit of money put in there. There were some mm. lovely, um, you know, crane shots. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a good piece of work. There. Uh, just to cheer people up in this yeah. sort of economic woes. Of <laughs> Absolutely, world, it, it yeah. Suyako, which Suyako, was yeah. a, a second uh, film that really... Um, that was great. I really, really this. enjoyed that. Um, yeah, so you talk. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. I, I was just getting so I, I pronounced it correctly, and I forgot what I was going to say there. But um, it, it was just a gorgeous film, beautifully mm. made, beautifully shot, beautiful story. Um, a story of, from you know the director's heart because it was it was sort of uh, based on her uh, grandmother's uh, experience mm. of um, a factory worker in Japan who's sort of been through the war. It's sort of post about early fifties. Mm. Um, settles down uh, in the sort of traditional way with a with a man. Has a couple of children. Unfortunately, they're girls, so it doesn't please the mother-in-law. And then along out of the blue comes an old mm. lover of hers, an old um, female lover of hers. And they rekindles um, yeah. their um, it rekindles her, her sort of previous life. Um, it, it was just joyous, isn't it? Mm. I thought it was really interesting actually how it kind of paralleled their relationship and rebuilding that with the kind of restructuring and rebuilding of Japan as well in the 1950s. I thought it was interesting that it touched on those notes as well. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly something that we've not seen before. Mm. Um, I don't think we've seen that many Japanese films at Iris before anyway. Um, and we certainly not. It just felt like a story we haven't been told before. So that's why I think that one that one stood out for me. Mm, no, it it certainly mm. did. And I, I did get a little bit kind of lump in the well, throat. Well, I did have I did, I did yeah. have to wipe away a tear. Yeah, yeah. it was a bit brief encounter. I claim it, it was a hay fever, but obviously yeah. not a lot of hay fever. If I'd been at home, it would have been the point when I kind of lifted up the newspaper, mm -hmm. and <laughs> like well, my dad did at the end of Shawshank <laughs> Redemption. You know, it'd be, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, like that. Yeah.
the second batch was a little bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. It was it? a little bit more mixed, um, and I think it was sort of the yeah. There were a few talking points in there, talking to people as we were coming out of the screenings. However, there were still some really strong films in there. Um, I liked uh, Hold On Tight, which is an Irish documentary, and I wasn't sure when it started whether I would like it because I didn't know whether it was going to say anything mm. new or whether it was going to tell us anything we haven't already kind of considered in previous years. Uh, essentially, it starts off as just an interview with this couple about them displaying, you know, open displays of affection in public. But then it, it turns into, so it's, it's kind of interviews with five different couples and five very different couples as well. And so we get these different perspectives on the subject itself wasn't so much the subject being interviewed as the subject of public displays of affection uh, with, you know, gay and lesbian couples. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I, I thought and it was very, very, very well done. It kind of took what must have been hours and hours and hours and hours of footage and distilled it down into 20 very, very focused minutes. I'm not very comfortable with public displays of affection. I think Jenny feels bad, but um, I feel bad too. You're trying to act like you're something that you're not, just temporarily to make these other people who probably don't care is slightly more comfortable, which is a ridiculous situation. <laughs> I don't feel ashamed in any way, even though I act like I do. I guess I'm a bit of a coward. <laughs> the whole appeal of not having to stand out from anyone is just what I prefer. James Dean, which mm. is a short Scottish yeah, yeah. film. Um, it, it was very simple and very straightforward. Yeah, again, and, and sort of deceptively simple in a way, yeah, I think, because yeah. it, it, it was really nicely edited. Uh, and there was actually little moments of suspense and little moments of drama and little moments of comedy all within mm. the confines of a car. The story basically of a, sort of a, a teenager who, uh, they're, they're, they're just on a family trip, they're all bundled into the car, and then mm. she chooses this time to tell her parents that uh, she's a transvestite. No, Alex, you're not going like that. Go get changed. Alex, do you hear me? I said, go get changed. No. Right, we're not going anywhere until you get changed. Hey, let's get moving. What's going on? <laughs> what are you supposed to be? I'm a tranny, aren't I? I look like James Dean. Don't encourage her. Alex, get inside and change. Mum? We have to pick up Nana. She's not going to like this one bit. She can piss off. <laughs> then there was programme three, uh, yep. which you wouldn't really take your grand to. No, I like to call it sexy time because there was a lot of bare naked flesh on view. It certainly one. was, and the blowjob sort of um, quotient <laughs> went, went, went through the roof, really. Massively in Programme 3. But no, it was... Uh, but there's still some really great films in there. I think um, well, there's Cappuccino, as you mentioned, which is a nice sort of little coming-of-age story, so to speak. Um, but yeah, really nicely acted. Uh, the central performance in it, I can't remember the actor's name, I've got it written down somewhere, but no, the, the central actor in it was... Uh, he was, he was a kid. Really, yeah, really uh, endearing, uh, yeah. yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Out of all, that was probably the cutest out of, uh, out mm. of all of them. Um, yeah, it was just really kind of heartwarming and really nice, whereas the other ones were quite explicit and quite kind of hard hitting I sure. think so it was quite nice to have this story that was about his relationship with his mother as well and, and this kind of crush that he's got on, a, on yeah, his schoolmate yeah, and stuff so yeah, I thought that was yeah. quite cool. Et toi, qu'est-ce qui t'a fait pleurer c est, c est, cette fille Qu'est-ce qu'il y a Hey, qu'est-ce qu'il y a C'est pas une fille.
The other film I really liked in Program 3 actually was Play Your Name, uh, Play Name which is a US Thai f- uh, film. Mm-hmm. Which because, just because it gave, gave us a kind of flip side to the experience of Western tourists going into Thailand. I mean, I think a lot of us know people who've gone to Thailand for a specific reason. Um, and we don't normally see the kind of human... Ping pong mainly, <laughs> yeah. Ping pong and other things. Yeah. And um, we don't normally see the kind of human cost of that and the emotional cost of that. And I think this film gave us that a little bit. There was this kind of, what had started as very kind of light and maybe a little bit frothy. There's this kind of very, very emotionally poignant mm. last shot mm. in it mm. uh, without giving too much away. But it's, um, but yeah, so I was really impressed with that actually. Quite a simple film, but um, but yeah, I, I really, again, good performances kind of carried it through. and. It gave us something that we haven't necessarily seen before. Everyone seemed really free and open in the bar last night to me. Yes, but with your family, no talk. Not like in America. Yeah. It's a great country. I visit you in New York. Sure. Sure, just let me know uh, let me know when you get there. We can be friends. I like that. Hey, uh, where's the bathroom? Thank you.